Fingers are one of the most delicate things to model because they have to look good fully extended and fully curled up. But at the same time, you can't spend a lot of effort fixing them because there's 10 of them and they're very small. In a video game character, it rarely makes sense to add more bones or more shape keys to a finger. That really weighs down the character as a whole in a place you don't want to waste time on. So what you really want is a cheap finger, something that is just topology and basic bones with no late game fixes. Uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, I'll show you. It looks like this. Ooh, ah. As you can see, we've preserved the mass of each of the joints. The way we've done this is we've introduced crumple zones. If we go over into x-ray view, you can see that these joints cross into each other. Clipping like this is normally considered very bad. It's usually very obvious to the player, and it sort of reveals that they're looking at a 3D model rather than a character. But in this case, the clipping is entirely on the inside of a joint. They're not going to be able to see it. Because of that, we can use this clipping to preserve the shape of the finger and to fake the kind of skin bulges that you get when you yourself curl up your finger. Go do it now and take a look. Of course, we can't get the bulging because we're not simulating that sort of thing, but we can get the right sort of crease. As you can see, this finger is fairly realistic. It would work in a video game. The entire secret is that crumple zone. If we look at how our finger is set up, this is just an octagon extruded down the finger like so. Uh, and here, at each joint, we have twin cuts. These twin cuts are the crumple zone. Down here at the bottom, they're going to scissor past each other and clip into the other joint. That's the secret. But here's the thing. This is not 100% bound to the middle bone. And this is not 100% bound to the first bone. They're soft. I used default blender weighting. I just told it to, you know, parent these with automatic weighting. So this is 100% bound to this bone. But this is like only 80% bound to this bone. That's important because it gives it a more realistic shape. Without that, you would end up with it feeling very mechanical, and the fingers wouldn't feel like they were properly adjusting and bulging. This same basic principle works regardless of how high poly or low poly your finger is. Now, the lower poly you are, the more careful you're going to have to be to actually set the weights up properly. Let me show you. Here's some low poly fingers that I created for us. This one here is just an extruded cube. Very, very basic setup. But you can see that it's got no crumple zone. This knuckle is just a single cut. Because of that, what we end up with are these really deep, distracting creases. Those are very hard to avoid without a crumple zone. Over here, we have the same finger, but all I've done is I've cut that into two. Not even the whole way up. The joint is still a single, uh, a single line on top. I just cut it on the bottom, because the bottom is the only place we need to scissor across. It's the only place we need a crumple zone. And there we are. That's a much more realistic feeling finger, as you can see. Now, if you go look online, you're going to see a lot of people who want to add extra topology to the top of the finger, to the knuckle. I think that's the wrong instinct. I think it makes a lot more sense to pay attention to the bottom of the finger because the knuckle of the finger just needs to be pretty rigid. It doesn't need to be perfect. And as you can see, the knuckle of the finger looks perfectly fine in all of these examples. Well, there we are. One of those buttons will do it. Even without any additional topology, the knuckles look fine. There's no problems with them. So I would really focus on making sure you've got your crumple zones intact. And don't forget that you do need to have something that is 100% bound to the bone. This is 100% bound to the middle bone. That allows the middle joint to keep its shape. So you've got the crumple zones, and you've got the 100% rigid bone attached loop. That's the secret. 
works at every poly level, works no matter how many times you subdivide it. It's just a really easy way to make fingers. I think that there will be a lot of people who have other opinions, and I don't think they're wrong. I think that there are a lot of good ways to make fingers, but this way is very straightforward. And I hope it helps.